The Institute of Internal Auditors presents the All Things Internal Audit AI podcast. In this episode, Chief Financial Officer at Lexica AI, Janice Burlingame, discusses her presentation at the IIA's Analytics, Automation, and AI Virtual Conference with IIA Senior Director of Content Development, Robert Perez. Janice, thanks so much for joining me today on the podcast. I appreciate you being in. It's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. So obviously, we, you're here as uh, one of the featured speakers at our Analytics and Automation and AI conference coming up. And I'm excited to have you here because you are speaking on a topic of particular interest. Uh, so give me a real quick uh, overview for the conference participants on what to expect from your presentation. So AI is a topic that it's a hot topic um, in many aspects. People fear it. Some people embrace it and love it. Most people don't know what to do with it. And so my goal is to come in and shine some light in a very balanced manner, you know, um, and share both the positives of AI, but also what are the risk areas. So obviously we're not going to be able to cover all of the, uh, the topics. We don't want to see your thunder actually from, from the uh, presentation itself. But first, let's address why it's important to look at, as you pointed out, both the pros and the cons uh, of AI. Well, you know, much like the elections that are upcoming, it's important to consider all sides of an issue, right? Um, there's a lot of danger that comes with bias. And so I think the, the best way to approach any knowledge is to look at all perspectives. But I'm covering AI in this IA um, presentation because it's a lot easier to be specific with regards to how auditors could use it. And so it is an area that's still so new to many people. It's, it's nascent, even though it's been around. And I feel that it's important to give everybody an overview from an unbiased standpoint of what it could do for you and also, you know, what to be cautious of. So to that point, data plays a featured role in both your lists, the positives and the perils. Uh, do you think most organizations are in good shape when it comes to, to data or understanding their data? You know, this is interesting. I just had my board of governors meeting with my IAA leadership team in LA mm -hmm. and uh, I pulsed everybody because everyone's a leader in their field. And I think the consensus is most organizations don't have the strongest handle on their data. And, you know, not to blame anyone, but there's just so many sources of data. There's so much data and the quality of data is still in question. And so a lot of companies still don't have a data governance strategy. And that's probably one of the biggest areas of opportunity is data well, management and privacy. Okay. <laughs> and, and, well, similarly, do you, do you believe the most internal auditors have an understanding of data, especially when it comes to auditing AI and other uh, newer technology? I think most of us have base level understanding. There may be some that are more sophisticated with regards to using data, using AI to audit data. But I would think majority, based on what I've seen, are still trying to understand how to manage it better. Okay. So tell me briefly uh, about what are the risks that you'll be covering, uh, and that is bias and misinterpretation. That's one of the perils, I guess. Yes, um, bias is, is a big one. Did you know that when they first programmed the Tesla, the auto drive, it had a bias towards color? Meaning, <laughs> okay, not just Tesla, but all auto driving, they tend to see light color skin as more of a risk to avoid. And if you have a darker color, it, it will not choose that as a priority. And so that is one area, an example of dangers and bias. And bias is pervasive in data, in AI. And so it's up to us to make sure we can identify it. Um, it's a major risk. All AI models are susceptible. And um, we need to train our data and make sure that we have the proper algorithmic bias handled. And there's also human bias 
I think we all have biases, whether it's conscious or subconscious. And so the first step is having awareness and understanding what they could be in order to address it. And, and to your point, it, it's not like it's something, you know, evil that's lurking, that somebody's doing something deliberate. It's sometimes we're, there's bias built in that we're just unaware of, correct? It's inherent. It's, it's not maliciously intended, or at least I hope not. Um, but yes, it is, it is inherent in all data, just by nature. So I do want to cover some of the opportunities or the positive sides. Uh, and I'm intrigued particularly by your exploration of explainable AI. Tell me a little bit about, a little bit about that. Yes. So explainable AI, um, we refer to it as XAI um, in the AI field. And it's funny, it's not Elon Musk's son's name because I think his son's name is actually XAI. <laughs> I wonder if there's any correlation, <laughs> but explainable AI, um, you know, in the olden days, we had Sarbanes-Oxley and um, there are certain risks with technology. And one of the risks is properly documenting the system development life cycle, ensuring that when there's change, it's managed and documented, pretty similar. So AI, explainable AI is ensuring that you can properly explain and identify how the AI is structured and programmed. Um, whether it's, uh, let me give you some examples, like data preparation. Um, when you are collaborating with data scientists, the AI, explainable AI is ensuring there's historical inventory data that are included. There's point of sale transaction data. There's data on past inventory. So just being able to explain what goes into the programming and in the data analysis. So that's uh, explainable AI in action. Also, there's model selection and training. So understanding what goes into the model selection process. Um, and then XAI enabled machine learning model. How is the data trained? So just proper documentation as all auditors are very well trained in is part of that X XAI in action. And, and that's a great observation, especially for internal auditors who may be a little, you know, leery or put off about whether they were going to be able to do this. A lot of this stuff is basic internal auditing, just different, uh, applied to different processes, correct? It is. Um, so it's based, It's the opposite of the black box model. Black box, like, wait, what just happened and how did this happen? But no, explainable AI is essentially being able to understand the rationale behind even potential black areas when you're using AI, understanding the data points and the trends that trigger them, and um, that's explainable AI. Excellent. So, I mean, obviously this is a huge subject, but and, and we could probably chat for hours on this, but tell me, is there any other final thoughts, particularly uh, in terms of what folks can expect uh, further in your presentation? Yes, um, some final thoughts on AI is um, a lot of people have a fear of AI and replacing their jobs, but I don't see it that way. Perhaps I am a glass half full type of personality, but I do see it as a tool that we can use to amplify and to expedite our tasks. And there are some tasks, let's face it, as auditors, we probably would rather not do. For example, combing through thousands, if not tens of thousands of lines of data. And so you should see AI as a friend, not a foe, not something to be scared of. And the analogy I always bring up is you can look at it as a knife, right? Knife in the hands of a surgeon could save a life. Knife in the hands of a chef could cook delicious Michelin star meals that nourish your soul. But knife in the hands of someone who's a criminal or dangerous could harm as well. And so look at it as a tool, use it for good and be aware of any of the potential risks. And as auditors, I think we just have that inherently. We're intuitive when it comes to risks. So that's the perspective I would take in looking at AI. Excellent. So I'm, I'm sure uh, all the attendees will uh, gain a lot from your presentation at uh, the conference. And thank you again for taking time to uh, chat with us today. Thank you. I appreciate the thoughtful questions and I'm excited to present. <laughs>